Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland, and welcome to my series of short videos on problem solving techniques. In video number 12, let's take a look at Moscow analysis. Now when we do a Moscow analysis, we're generally looking at requirements. So requirements for a project sometimes can be many. You could have a very, very long list of different requirements that you have gathered or elicited from your customer, and you're working on uh, trying to figure out well, which of these are the most important. So therefore, you need to be able to prioritize some requirements over the others. And it's also important that you, your team, your stakeholders, and your clients have a common understanding of what those priorities are. So Moscow analysis will hopefully help us um, achieve this goal. Let's take a look at an example of a website. We're building a website and we would have many, many requirements from our customers and potentially a very, very long list of requirements for the, a new website. Now, of course, some of these requirements are more important than others. So the question is, how do we go about prioritizing that? Moscow analysis is one of the many answers that could help us out here. So let's see exactly what Moscow analysis is. Well, it's got nothing to do with the city of Moscow. Uh, we take out the M, the S, the C, and the W. M stands for must, so we must have this requirement. S for should, C for could, and W finally stands for we won't have this requirement. The must requirements should be regarded as non-negotiable. Without them, the project will fail. It is imperative to get agreement on what these requirements are. The S for should requirements are those that should be implemented if at all possible. And while they are high priority, they sometimes can be satisfied in different ways. For C, the could requirements are those that are nice to have, but that should only be included if appropriate resources are available. The won't requirements are those that will not be implemented, though maybe they may well be at a later time. Drawing up a list of requirements that won't be implemented can be just sometimes just as important as drawing up a list of those that must be implemented. Identifying a requirement as a won't demonstrates that while it is important, it can be included in a later version of a product or service. So for example, many software projects um, would have won't requirements not implemented in the first version, but maybe implemented in a later or version two or version three. So let's take a look at our website analysis. When we're building a new website or fixing an old one or updating a site, whatever the project is, we will have a long list of requirements. And I have selected just five here uh, for our example. These are typical requirements uh, for a website that overall aim is that a user can log on to the website and be able to change their user profile. So here are some of the requirements for that particular project. Requirement A is that users can log on to the website. B, that users should be able to have a forgot password utility. C, that they can change their account details. D, that the user should be able to send an email to the system requesting a change to an accounts page. And finally, requirement E is that when a user clicks on a phone number on the web page, a call is made automatically from their desk phone to that number. So these are five different requirements of differing priorities. When we apply the Moscow analysis, highlighted in yellow over here on the right-hand side, we can see that some are much more important than others. The table here shows that requirements A and C must be implemented. Okay, These are clearly very, very important requirements, and these are therefore of high priority. Requirement B should be implemented if possible, while requirement D is a nice-to-have requirement that can be implemented assuming the resources are available. Finally, the last requirement here, E, has the lowest priority and may be excluded altogether or included in a later version. So in this way, we can work our way through each requirement on our list and decide whether it is a must, should, could or a won't. And when we have applied this criteria to our list of requirements, we can go back and refine the, the list. And for, for example, if we have a, still have a lot of musts, can we reduce it a little bit further? What can wait to a later version? And so on. So the important thing to remember here is that each requirement is investigated and will have an M, S, C or W applied to it. And then within your team and with your clients, you get an agreement on what should and should not be implemented in this particular version and what can wait for a later version. It's also important here that you may have to take into account the cost of implementing each requirement and also the time required to implement each requirement. So, in summary, Moscow analysis helps us prioritize requirements. If we have a very long or even a medium or short list of requirements, we need to implement some of those over others. In other words, some are more important than others, so which ones are they? And Moscow analysis will help us to um, uh, find out what they are. If you found this problem solving technique useful, uh, Moscow analysis, along with many other techniques, are covered in my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, uh, which is about problem solving techniques and strategies. It's published by the Liffey Press and is available on Amazon. I hope you found the video useful. 
thank you for watching.